We'd like to welcome you to our worship service today here at the Souls Harbor Church. Come and join us for an exciting time of worship to the Lord. And also join us as we share with you the principles from God's Word that are going to enrich your lives. And so, sit back and enjoy this time of ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Put your hands together and help us out. Come on, praise team. Deep, way down deep, way down deep, way down deep. You got it, audience. That's it, church family. Just say it with us. It's deep. Way down deep, way down deep. Here we go, everybody. Oh, deep, way down deep, way down deep, down in my heart. Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you know he's your Savior? Amen. How many of you know he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother? 
How many of you know he's the good shepherd that laid down his life for you, the sheep? Oh, yes. Yeah. So we're going to follow up that, on that same theme today as we turn to John chapter 10 and verse 22. And we ask ourselves the question today, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Verse 22, the word says, Then came the feast of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple area, walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus comes on the scene. And he is always the answer to whatever the question is. Hallelujah. Who is Lord? Jesus. Amen. Who's my Savior? Jesus. Who's the King? Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody might have felt a streak of glory go down your spine when you said his name. Jesus. Now. As Jesus enters, he's coming in town at the Feast of Dedication, which we know of as Hanukkah, the Feast of Lights. And Jesus chooses this occasion to bring some revelation. Aren't you glad that Jesus has chosen some occasions to bring you some revelation of who he is? Oh, how many of you remember some of those occasions? How many of you know today is one of those occasions? Hallelujah. Because he wants to reveal to you who he is. So you see, they said, Jesus, tell us who you are. Who are you? Are you the Christ? And so Jesus coming at this time, which of course we know the Jews celebrated this feast because earlier in the days of the sons of Maccabees, there were four brothers who went in. And when uh, the temple had been taken over by Antiochus Epiphanes and he had slaughtered a pig on the altar and he had desecrated the temple, but four brave men came in and they rose up and they took back over with the Jewish army that temple again. And they only had a little bit of anointing oil to keep the light burning for one day. But they came in the next day and the light was still burning. They came in the next day and the light was still burning. They came in the next day and the light was still burning. They came in the next day and the light was still burning. They came in the next day and the light was still burning. How many of you know when God turns the light on, no man can turn the light off? Oh, hallelujah. There's plenty of anointing. It doesn't matter what is the physical. What matters is what God does in the spiritual. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. God's not through yet. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. He's still lighting the way. How many of you know, thy word is a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. How many of you have been out when you needed some light in your life? Praise the Lord. You know, I took Debbie out into the Redwood Forest out in California. How many of you, has anybody ever seen the Sequoia Redwoods? Anybody seen Redwoods here? I took her out there and I said, honey. I said, isn't this beautiful? We enjoyed it that day. And I just wanted to see the sun beam down through those redwoods. And so I said, honey, let's just stay over tonight. And she said, but darling, I think she said darling. She said, <laughs> oh, glory. I said, but let's just spend the night. But she said, oh, darling. She said, there's a place in San Francisco with a big old king size bed. And she said, there's nothing but a little shack out here. She said, I'll need a big old nice bed with plenty of room for you to stay on your side and me to stay on mine. <laughs> oh, Lord. But I said, darling, don't you remember that road? We went up that road and how difficult it was. All those curves and turns. If you've ever seen some of those roads in California, you know what I'm talking about. And the cliff is right over the edge. And I said, it's, it's getting real dark and my vision's not too good tonight. <laughs> so, 
So she said, okay, I'll stay over. But she said, we didn't come prepared to camp out. She said, how, how are we going to see? We don't have a fly, flashlight to lead the way. And I said, baby, I'll be your flashlight. Just follow Big Daddy. She was walking by faith. <laughs> But it was so dark out there. But I praise God. We were able to see some light. To light the way to where we needed to go. And in life sometimes you need the Lord's word to light the way for you. Jesus said I am the light of the world. He that believeth in me shall not walk in darkness. But shall have the light of life. Hallelujah. Jesus says you want to know who I am? John told us in John chapter 1 and verse 1. He says in the beginning was the word. The logos. And to the Greeks that word was a powerful word. That meant the, meant the cosmic force of the universe. And, and John says in the beginning. In all of eternity was the word. Hallelujah. And the word was with God. He was with God the Father. And not only that. The word was God. All things were created by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life and that life was the light of men. How many of you have seen the light today? How many of you know Him personally? How many of you walked with Him this morning? How many of you talked to Him this morning? Oh, I want you to know, I know Jesus. He's walked with me throughout many years of my life and I love to walk with Him today. How about you? Well, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. So Jesus, the light of Hanukkah, the light at the Feast of Dedication, the eternal flame, oh glory, the eternal one, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last, I am he who is. He who was, he who is to come, the everlasting God. Oh, hallelujah. Does anybody know him today? Oh, does anybody know the one who is the great I am that I am? The Lord God Almighty. When Jesus began to speak to these people, he began to reveal to them who he is. How many of you want more revelation knowledge? Brother Brian, you said every day we got to learn a little more because we couldn't contain it all if he poured it all into us at once. When old Psalm says he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Praise God. Aren't you glad he walks with you and talks with you? All along the way. One time I was preaching and I said, he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And I got it mixed up with home, home on the range. <laughs> home, home on the range. Where the deer and the antelope play. <laughs> and I didn't even know I preached it, but how many of you know Todd let me know after service? He said, you were preaching home, home on the range. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God for good members. Amen. Yes, <laughs> Glory to God. But he's there with you on the plains. He was there with us in those Sequoia Redwoods as we looked at those beautiful redwoods that God had created. How many of you ever look at something God made and say, wow, God? Yes. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, is it all right if I shout while I'm going to anyway? Hallelujah! Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah! Oh, I tell you what, I got the victory today. Does anybody else have some victory way down in your soul? Oh, way down deep. Hallelujah! In your soul. So Jesus begins to reveal to them. Now in Colossians chapter 1, Verse 15, Paul reveals, and it says, He who is in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And that word in the Greek, firstborn, is protakos in the Greek. And what that means is he's the unique one of the universe. Oh, glory. I said he's the unique one in the universe. Then he said, 
he, he speaks to us and says, and he created all things. John said, he created all things and for thy pleasure they are created. Who is worthy to open the scroll? I looked all over heaven and no one was worthy to open the scroll. But he said, then I saw him, the lamb of the tribe of Judah, the root of Jesse. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The lion of the tribe of Judah rose up. And I want you to know today, he's still rising up. Hallelujah. He's still beginning to sound forth the glorious trumpet of God. And I want you to know, when, when I think about Jesus, the unique one, the firstborn of all creation, all things were created by him, verse 16, whether they be visible or invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers all things are created by him and for him that he might be the preeminent one and in him all things consist glory to God how many of you know that this chair is a lot of atoms and molecules that you're sitting on are you praying that they hold together today If they quit being glued together, what would happen? <laughs> I would enjoy seeing it, I have to confess. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory. But you think about all these atoms. What's holding them together? God, you see, there's protons and neutrons, electrons in these molecules, in the atoms, and you think about how they, they, they're all circling around, and they don't understand what's holding all these atoms together. Oh, but I know what's holding them together. In Him, all things consist or are held together. You know, God has made His imprint in all of us. In fact, if you go down to the human cell and you look inside the cell under a telescope into the minute cell, there's a part of the cell called the laminin. And in that part of the cell, God also has revealed himself. So I'm going to ask Jason, can you show a, a picture of that this time so everybody can see exactly what I'm talking about today? Inside of that cell, God has put a sign of himself. Now, when you think about the universe and how big it is, and you think about how that he has revealed himself, how many of you have ever looked up at the stars at night and you've seen the face of God? I have. I've looked, I've looked into the, I've gazed into the stars and I've seen the very face of God. As he revealed himself to me. Oh, hallelujah. I've looked up and I said like David, when I consider the heavens, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Oh, hallelujah. You see, this is inside your DNA. How many of you know? He has revealed the plan of God before you were created. God said Christ was slain before the foundation of the world. And so God, when he formed and fashioned from the dust of the earth, he said, I'm going to put a piece of your future salvation inside your cell. You serve a great God today. Jesus said, I am the son of God. You don't want to know who I am? I am the son of God. He said, I am the Messiah. I am the anointed one. I am the redeemer of the world. I am that I am. Oh, hallelujah. Just like Moses when he looked at the burning bush and he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am that I am. How many of you know Jesus is your I am today? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9 said, in him the fullness of the Godhead dwells in bodily form. In the beginning was the word and the word became flesh. The word, the 
Lagos was tabernacled in the flesh and he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory even the glory is of the father full of grace and truth in him we live and move and have our being in him how many of you are in him today Oh, and when he told them this, they picked up stones to stone him. And they said, we're ready to stone you, Jesus. And he said, now, which miracle are you going to stone me for? Healing the blind man that couldn't see from birth? Are you going to stone me for giving the man hearing that could not hear? Are you going to stone me for speaking? The man speaking that I said, speak. Are you going to stone me for the leper that was made whole? They said, no, we're not going to stone you for that. We're going to stone you for blasphemy. Because you make yourself equal with God. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am God the Son come down in human form. Who, although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. But he stripped himself in order to assume the guise of a servant in that he became like man and was born a human being. And after this, he humbled and abased himself still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. You can say it now or you can say it later, but you'll say it one day. How many of you want to say it today? Just say it with me. Jesus is Lord. Say that again. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And it says that the, to the glory of God the Father, when God the Father hears you say that, He smiles. He says, that's my son you're talking about. How many of you like for somebody to brag on your kids? Come on. I know you. I see you light up. Oh, glory to God. Did you know the Father looks at us? And when we understand who His Son is, He smiles. Your Abba Father smiles. Hebrews 1 tells us, In the past God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days He has spoken to His Son. His Son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. And after He had provided purification for our sins, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Therefore, He's received a name above every name. Oh, for to which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstools. But about the Son, He says, Thy throne, O God, will last forever and ever, and righteousness will be your scepter. Oh, the, the earth will perish, but you remain the same. Hallelujah. How many of you know he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Jesus Christ, your Savior. He's your Lord. Nobody can take him from you. He's your Messiah. You're holding on to him. But I got news for you. He's holding on to you. He said, no man can pluck you out of my hand. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. I said no man can pluck you out of God's hand. Oh, glory to God. I said no man. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, for shall famine, shall persecution, for nakedness, or peril, or sword? No. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But he said, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know nothing can separate you from that love he's holding you in his hand 
You're the only one who can walk out, but no man can pluck you from it. Well, you got some glory inside, don't you, Brian? Oh, hallelujah. I, did somebody feel the rivers of living water stirring in your soul? Hallelujah. Jesus said this, he spake of his spirit. Oh, I want you to know the spirit's working in you right now. A man came up to me and was sharing his heart with me about his, his wife had left him and some things were going wrong in his life. But I said, I said, but God, I said, God's got a word for you. Rise up. God's not through with you yet. Oh, hallelujah. You see, he was broken, but God said, I'm here to mend. How many of you know he came to mend? How many of you know he's brought wholeness into your life? How many of you know you felt a divine touch from the master's hand? And he touched your life. And he said, be whole. And you felt your spirit become whole in Jesus' name. Let us stand and worship. We're glad you could join us in our worship service today. And so we want to give you an opportunity, if you haven't made Christ your personal Lord and Savior, to do so at this time. Simply pray this prayer with me. Father God, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, into this world. And I thank you, Christ, that you are willing to pay the price for my sins. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your love. I receive your mercy into my life. And now I'm born again by the power of your Holy Spirit. And I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today, you can know from this point forward, you've got to spend all eternity with God and with your loved ones. And on your journey with God, God is going to show and reveal himself to you more and more each and every day. And one thing you need to do is find a good church home. And we'd like to invite you to the Souls Harbor Church. When you walk in these doors, you can feel the presence of God. You can feel the love and the care that we have for you. We're here to minister to each one of your needs. And we're here to pray over you in the name of Jesus Christ so that you can experience more of God's blessing and anointing in your life. And so we want to make the invitation to you. Come out and join us. Be a part of our family. And then if you want to help us with our media ministry to reach our community for Christ, then we want to show our appreciation to you by giving you one of our CDs or DVDs of our services. And we'd also like to offer the best of our praise and worship CDs. These are available so that you can take them with you in your car and you can worship and give praise to God. And you can find an opportunity to experience God fresh way each and every day. And so simply uh, send your checks to the Souls Harbor Church at 451 West Helen Ave in Punta Gorda, Florida. And we'll make sure you get one of those as soon as possible. You have a great day and may God richly bless you until we meet again.